pair of wind tips. I've got them on. <laughs> Wait, I, I ordered a set. I know he doesn't have a he doesn't have a phone, so he's living happily. But uh, he, I, I did get an outfit and I, his little replica. I'm not sure if he's seen it yet. Yeah, no. I'm not sure. The wing tips that I wore were Dexter's, and I think they were headquartered maybe in New Hampshire or Maine. I'm not sure if they still make their wing tip shoes. Yet. I'm not sure, but I know if I try them on, I'm probably going to get a penalty. So, <laughs> yeah, it, uh, they're they're a little strict nowadays with the SFI really? SFI tag. Oh yeah. So you have no. to wear that. We're making gloves with that are webbed now. It's, <laughs> it's wild, wild world. <laughs> well, you know, in my era of the sport, basically, I guess how the wingtips came about was we had a problem, especially on the short tracks with the big block engines and the headers and stuff and the, and the exhaust pipe up against the floorboard. The, heat, right? the insulation wasn't in those days what it is today and actually a piece of plywood worked the best but it would catch a fire sometimes. <laughs> and, yeah, and start, you know, like charcoal. <laughs> and, uh, and so David Pearson one day at North Wilkesboro said to me, he said, haven't you got any shoes with leather soles? And I said, yes, I do. I said, they're my dress shoes. They're wingtips. And he said, well, where are they? I said, they're out in the infield in the trunk in the car and in the suitcase. He said, well, go get them and wear them today. So I did, and then just the race fans picked up on it. I didn't burn my feet that day at North Wilkesboro. And it just, if I go somewhere now and do autographs, people will lift the tablecloth up and look. They want to see if I got the wingtips on. Like, I love it. Like when I do the stocks for tots autographs, I'll bet you there will be an average of 15 or 20 people want to lift, lift that cloth up on the table see if I have the wing tips. Is it just one pair or multiple? Oh no, I got, I suppose it half a dozen. Oh, <laughs> you can give a sponsorship or something. <laughs> yeah, well, well still on the, the, the Hush yeah. Puppy people uh, <laughs> offered to give me shoes at yeah. one time, but they didn't have a wing tip. Oh, gotcha. And, and I don't think they had a leather sole either. Oh, that's awesome. I wear king. I think these are kangaroos. <laughs> <laughs> Different world for sure. But North Wilkes is next week, so I'm gonna try them. <laughs> they, you are always so loyal to Goodyear, and to have your throwback scheme honored here and in the Goodyear 400. What does that mean to you? To all, it kind of encompasses your career. Well, I think it's really nice. I mean, I guess you've been involved in the sport a long, long time, and so I've always been loyal to the people that helped me. And, and Goodyear, um, if it hadn't been for their help a lot of times, uh, I wouldn't have made it. And, and I can recall the tire war way, way back, like in 69 or 70, one of the it wasn't a tire war at that time, it was just competition between the other tire company and Goodyear. And uh, I think Firestone came up with a big point fund deal to get a lot of people to run the tire um, so you could benefit at the end of the year. Goodyear, uh, is what they came up with is we could put a Goodyear service store tire center ad on our race car and they would supply us with X number of dollars worth of tires during the season. If we exceeded that number, then we had to had to pay for the tires. But that's what got me on the Goodyear tires, and uh, they've helped me a lot. And, and then I done the IROC cars. And of course, we had Goodyear involved in the IROC cars. So I was one of the first testers of the radio tires because we tested them in the beginning on the IROC cars before we came into the NASCAR side with them. So uh, this, it's been a long, uh, a long friendship between us and Goodyear for many, many, many years, and I appreciate it, and, and I know they appreciate what I what I've done for them. And I always felt like even when we did have the terrible wars going on, a couple times, uh, most most tires were having problems because Goodyear come with a soft tire to try and combat the other tire manufacturer. And uh, it got them in trouble. And uh, I uh, I just didn't run the other tire. I stayed on the Goodyear's. I, I guess I recall Charlotte, you know, we got Harry Ganher and Ricky Rudd. And, and uh, I was in the office talking with Leo Mayo about bringing me some Atlanta tires. 
And he said the, he had some, but not enough to supply the field. And the NASCAR rule was when they brought a tire, they had to have enough of them to supply the entire field in case other people wanted to switch. So Dale Earnhardt and Kenny Schrader came in the office when I was talking to Mr. Mayo, and they were concerned with the tire thing and didn't want to run the other tire. But eventually, I was the only guy that started the race on the Goodyear tires, and the tires that Leo was able to bring actually were the Daytona tires, and he was quite concerned about me being able to qualify on those tires, because that was a pretty hard tire for Charlotte. But I did, I think I got qualified like 36 or 38. And in the race, um, I was gonna be in good shape, not that I was outrunning anybody, but they were pitting twice to my once. So what I would lose in the pit stop segment, I would make back up when they had to pit again. And eventually I was passing Sterling Marlin going into third turn and he blew one of them other tires and put me in the wall. So the other damn tire got me anyhow. <laughs> yeah, that was the sick. This is Harrison Burton, driver of the number 21. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also check out one of these two videos beside me. Visit funstretch.com for more racing content.